Lord. Father God, we just come before you tonight, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that you just begin to take full control, Father God, of tonight's service, Father God. That you begin to remove me, Father God, and, and, and you just flow through me tonight, Father God. That you just begin to, to speak to the people as you've spoken to me tonight, Father God. I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, just use me in a mighty way, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, and the people say, amen and amen. Come on, how many of you are still excited tonight? Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. Well, first of all, I just want to thank God for my salvation. Amen. Thank him for what he's been doing in my life and my family's life. Amen. How many know that God is faithful? Man, God is faithful. Amen. And he's been, he's, been, he's been doing great things within my life and not just my life, within my family and there within the men's home. Amen. And I believe that this year, 2021, is going to be great things. Amen. God's going to do greater things. Amen. And we know the enemy tried to come in in 2020 and begin to begin to lie to us and begin to, you know, try to tell us we had to stay quarantined. And, and, and he did. Amen. He did there for a little bit. Amen. He began to, you know, some of us or some myself. Amen. We probably began to neglect our promise from what God had promised us. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit tonight about how God is faithful with his promises. Amen. And then here in the Bible, we can begin to see that uh, that God, he don't, that he don't only declares that, that God is faithful, but he reveals his history, his, uh, throughout the history that his faith shows us his faithfulness. Amen. And tonight, I just want to remind us that the fact that God is faithful to his promise, amen, because when we begin to neglect his promise, it will begin to ne neglect what God has given us. Amen. Thank you, brother. And tonight, if we can open up our Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1. And if you're looking for a title tonight, it says, God is faithful to his promises. The word of God says, his divine power has given us everything that we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Therefore, there he has given us every great and precious promise, a precious promise. So that through them we may participate in divine nature and have an escape the, the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Amen. And tonight I just want to speak a little bit about how God keeps his promises. Because God, how many know that God has given each and every single one of us a promise? Amen. God has given each and every single one of a promise. And, and throughout the pandemic and throughout every, everything that has been going on, we can begin to unplug ourselves from God's power, from what God has already given us. And we begin to neglect what God has promised us. Amen. We begin to neglect that promise that, that God gave us. And we begin to, to begin to focus on what's taking place. And we begin to focus on the news. And we begin to focus on the things that are going around us. And we begin to put that promise on the back burner. And we begin to put that promise on the back burner instead of standing firm on that promise. Why, why should I say we stand firm? We should stand firm on that promise because God has already promised us. And everything that God promises comes to pass. Everything that he promises, it comes to pass. There's thousands and thousands of promises throughout the Bible where God, where I can show you where God is, is God's faithful in his promises that his promises come through. Amen. But we can't tonight, we can't begin to neglect what God has promised us. Amen. Uh, God had promised Pastor Sonny a few scriptures. And how many know that those promises are still coming to pass? In Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, he says, I will go before you and I will level the mountains. And I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. And I will hide and, and, and I will give you hidden treasures. Say hidden treasures. And richer store in secret places. So that you may know that I am the Lord of God of Israel who summons you by name. And how many know that 50 years plus later that God is still bringing those treasures out of darkness. That God is still bringing those treasures out of darkness here to those victory homes. That God's still bringing those treasures here into the church house. Those are promises from 50 plus years ago and they're still coming to pass right now. Those, those promises are still coming to pass. In Isaiah 54, 2 and 3 he says, I'm going to enlarge the places of your tent and, and, and stretch the tent curtains wide and do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for I will spread out to the right and to the left, and your descendants will dispose nations and settle in, and, and settle in cities. Amen. And I believe that those promises are still coming to pass. 
I mean, those promises are still coming to pass. Why do I say that? Because here within our church, we're, get, we're continuing to spread to the left and to the right. I mean, we're not just staying in one spot, Tri-Cities. We're continuing to move where God has promised to do. I mean, we're not just going to stay stuck here. Amen. But we're believing for other cities. Amen. We're believing for Moses Lake. Amen. We're believing for Sunnyside. And we're believing for Yakima. I believe that those promises are going to come true when Pastor speaks about it, when he tells us about it. I know I say, you know what? Those promises are going to come true. And I'm going to be in one of those promises i know that one day that god has promised me and my family to go somewhere not just to be here in christ city but i believe that we're going to be taking a city somewhere that's the promise that he's given me and i'm going to stand on that promise that promise is going to come to pass i'm going to stand firm and i believe it i might not see it right now but it's going to come to pass he also he promised that my family was going to be here amen and one by one they're going to continue to come in i don't want to put my brother on blast but he's here today Amen. That's a promise that God has given me, and they're going to continue to come. Amen. One by one, I believe it. I believe that God's going to continue to bring them. Amen. I got another brother that's serving the Lord. He might not be here serving the Lord with us today, but he's serving the Lord. Amen. He's serving the Lord, and they're going to continue one by one, one by one. God had promised me. He said, you know what? As you continue to stay faithful and you continue to do the will of God, I promise that your family's going to be there with you. Amen, your family's going to be there with you. Albert said it took him four years, amen, for him to see his promise come to pass. Amen, I'm not in a hurry. Amen, I'm going to wait patiently. Amen, I'm going to wait patiently. Why? Because it's going to be on God's timing. It's not on my timing. I can call them and I can preach to them and I can, I can do everything. But if, when, they're not, when they're ready, they're going to come. When they're ready, they're going to begin to come and serve the Lord. And, and they're going to be answer their promise. They're going to begin to answer that promise. And I believe tonight that God wants you to begin to stand firm on your promise. Amen. God wants you to know that, you know what, he hasn't forgot about you. God hasn't forgot about each and every single one of us. But God wants, to, wants us to begin to know that, hey, you know what, we got to hold that promise close to our heart. Hold that promise close to our heart. Why? Because it's very, very important that we know and we understand that what God has promised us, that it's it going to come to pass. He's going to fulfill that promise. Amen. But we just got to be obedient. Say obedient. We got to be obedient to what God has given us. See, when God tells us that he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Amen. And we got to understand. I heard, this, I heard a, a, a quote that uh, said, it says, you can't break God's promises by leaning on them. Amen. See, God wants us to lean on his promises and he wants us to stand on them. He wants us to count on those promises. I mean, he wants us to lean on those promises. How are we going to lean on those promises if we're not opening the word of God? If we're not opening the word of God. God wants to give us a promise. God wants to give us something, but if we're not seeking it, how are we going to find it? How's God going to give us something if we're not seeking that promise and, and begin to open up the word of God and let God begin to speak to us where he wants to speak to us? Amen. God, we got to begin to look for that promise. Amen. There's a promise for each and every single one of us, but if we're not opening our Bible and searching and seeking for it, then God's never going to give it to us. Amen. we got to begin to look for that, look for that promise. Amen. Peter declared that. That there's precious promise, and, and, to be, and to begin to accept those precious promises, we need to be partakers. And I looked up the word partaker, and it's a participant and partner and sharing the word of God. Amen. We, we claim that those precious promises are ours when we become Christian. But God, God has said that he will do a number of things. And I just want to point out a few scriptures tonight. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, but seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. As life, goes, as life goes on, we forget our foundation as people of God. And sometimes we begin to place other things before the Lord. And the verse here is perfect to remind us of the promise that if we put, if we put him first, that all things are going to come to pass. He says, seek the kingdom of God and the righteousness will open up the doors to all other needs in the world. Our financial needs, our relationships, and either, even the small details that we can begin overlook. Amen. And we have to begin to see that, hey, you know what? When God tells us something, when God begins to give us that promise, it's not just something small to put it right there on the back burner. It's just not something just to put there on the back burner. We need to begin to hold that dear to our hearts. Why? Because God is trying to tell us something. God's trying to begin to tell us something. It might be the smallest promise throughout the, that you read in the Bible, but I was looking, and there's over 30,000 promises throughout the Bible. There's over 30,000 promises throughout the Bible, and I was like, man, I, and I just kept reading, and I was getting, I was right there in First and Second Peter, and he, he, he talks about the precious faith and the precious blood and the precious promises, and, and I began to see, well, why is it so precious? 
It's because it's coming from God. It's coming from God, and we begin to receive those promises. It's something, it's something precious that we need to begin to hold dear to our heart. In 2 Corinthians, it says, For all the promises of God in him are yes and in amen and to the glory of God through us. And Paul reminds us that the promise of God of God are, are rock solid. If God says something will come to pass, then it's going to come to pass. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and believe in him and believe in his word. God, is, God isn't a man. His promises are guaranteed. Amen. His promises are guaranteed. So when God promises us something, we need to understand tonight that, hey, you know what? That promise is going to come to pass. Amen. That promise is going to begin to come to pass. We can't just begin to say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I read that scripture, and yet that's my promise. And we begin to tell someone that it's our promise, but if we don't begin to keep it dear to our heart or begin to put some action behind it, then we're never going to see it come to pass. Amen. We're never going to see what God really has for us. Amen. Paul always he reminded I I like the uh, first of uh, first and second Peter why because it talks it talks highly about how he keeps his promises and how he's faithful and I began to see how you know there for there uh, this pandemic that was going through um, I my, me and myself I, I you know I began to get stuck and be like man you know what I, I don't see it I don't see what's taking place and I began to focus more on what's taking place in the, on, on the news and began to watch this and that and instead of trying to focus on what God already had promised me focus on what God already had promised me and tonight I just want to encourage you if you're seeking that promise if you're saying well I haven't, I haven't even received a promise I be coming to church on a Wednesday I come to church on a Friday I come to work church on a Sunday was well, what it is that we need to begin to get into our word a little deeper get into our word a little deeper and let God begin to speak to you let God begin to speak to you because there's something in there that he's trying to tell us but if we're not seeking it if we're not looking he's never gonna we're never gonna find that promise that he has for us Amen. He's, we're never going to find that promise that he has for us. See, there's no doubt that we can, I can, we can continue to list hundreds and hundreds of promises tonight. But God, hopefully the, the ones that I've given you can begin to stick out to you and you can begin to look for a promise. Look for that promise that God has for you. Look for that promise that God has for you. Why? Because God's faithful. God's faithful in everything that he says. But we got to understand that tonight that, hey, you know what? We're not, just, we're not just saying it just to say it. But we say it because God is faithful. To his promises. God is faithful to his promises. And whatever, whatever he says. And another way of receiving God's promises. Is living in obedience to God's will. We got to be obedient to God's will. When we're doing the will of God. And we're continuing to serve God. With a whole heart. And, and we begin to see what he has for us. It's because we're being, being obedient. Being obedient to what God has given us. We can't just begin to say. Hey you know what I'm going to receive this. And just get it. And, and, and begin to do our own thing. Come to church on a Friday and get our breakthrough and God speaks to us and we, and, and we just don't come back because we got that blessing. That miracle began to take place, but we just run with that promise that, given, that promise that God has given us and we don't come back to it. To what? To the sanctuary and begin to continue to praise him, to give him the honor and the glory. Amen. So we got to understand tonight that, and I, there's another uh, scripture I want to point out. It's in Hebrews chapter 10. It teaches us that, that obedience is the key to obtaining God's promises. Amen. The obedience is the key to obtaining God's promises. Amen. And when we obey God and we believe what God is doing within our lives, then we got to continue to push through and believe that those promises are going to come to pass. Amen. And I believe tonight that God wants to begin to do something. God's trying to do something. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, it says that we know that for those who love, love God, all things work together. And for God, for, for God, and for those who are called according to his purpose. See, sometimes life doesn't turn out the way that we thought it would. But at times, circumstance around us are out of our control and enter into life and put it in a place of struggle or pain. Even the bad things happen to people of God. But Paul wrote, he said, all things, are, all things together are for the good. See, but whatever the enemy meant for evil, God, God's love and power is enough for, for each and every single one of us. Amen. What the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn it for good. 
Amen. What the enemy meant for evil, God's going to begin to turn it for good. Amen. So whatever you were going through there in 2020, whatever situation you may be going through today, God's trying to turn that situation into something good. Amen. So we got to remember tonight that, hey, you know what? I was going through something throughout this week. I was going through something before I got here. The enemy was lying to me. The enemy was telling me this and that. But, hey, you know what? You're here tonight to hear that, you know what? God has a promise for each and every single one of us. But we just got to begin to catch that promise and bring it close to our heart and let God begin to do something. Why? Because he is faithful. He is faithful in what he's going to do. If he tells us that, you know, something is going to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. Amen. Right there in Jeremiah 29, in Jeremiah 29, 11, there's promises and promise throughout the Bible where we can quote and quote and quote. But if we don't hold those scriptures and those promises dear to our heart, then we're never going to see them. We're never going to see what God has for us. Why? Because we can get so caught up in what the world is doing, get so caught up in what's taking place around us instead of being caught up in what God has for us. God has something bigger and better for us instead of just focus on what the focus what the world has. Amen. And so tonight, amen, I just want to encourage you that, hey, you know that God has a promise for each and every single one of us. Amen. God has a promise for each and every single one of us. But how many of us are going to receive that promise? How many of us are going to answer that promise? Amen. God, God's going to answer it. He's going to bring it to us. But we just got to begin to accept it. Amen. As the worship team makes their way up tonight. See, we can't forget what God has for us. We can't forget what God is trying to give us. Amen. We need to understand that when something is promised to us by God, that it's going to come to pass. That it's going to come to pass. We can't just sit there and, believe and think it's not going to come to pass. The, re the, the way we're going to know it's going to come to pass are we continue to tap into it. Are we continue to tap into God's promises. Are we continue to believe it. God promised you something. And it's going to come to pass. Amen. God promised us something. And it's going to come to pass. I have another scripture I want to read real quick. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jeremiah, you can turn your Bibles there. Jeremiah 31, verse 16. This is what God had told me when I was there, and I was going through it. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I was going through it, and God began to tell me, Jeremiah 31, 16. He says, this is what the Lord says. He said, restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. For the work, for the work you will, for, for your work, work, you will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of their enemies. And so there is hope for your descendants, declares the Lord. And your children will return from their old land. Amen. And when I was reading that in God, I was like, man. And how many know that it's not easy? It's not easy at times, but when we begin to rely on God and we begin to see what God has given us already, then we just got, it's gonna, that's what's going to continue to get us through. When I'm going through something, when we're going through something, I tell my wife, this is the scripture. I go back to that scripture. He says, restrain your voice from weeping and your, and your eyes from tears, for, the work will, for the, your work will be rewarded. Amen. Your work's going to be rewarded. I'm not saying, you know, but I, it's just something that God had told me. Hey, God, something that God has told me, and it sticks out to me. And I tell my family, hey, you know what? God's going to continue to do something. No matter what we go through, no matter the situation we do, God's going to bless us in the end. Amen. God's going to bless us in the end. And I believe that, hey, you know what? No matter what we go through, no matter how hard it may get at times, no matter how those, what the situation is, God's going to bless us. We just got to continue to stand firm, continue to believe, hey, you know what? That promise is going to come to pass. That promise is going to come to pass. Amen. And I believe tonight, we all stand tonight. Uh, we all stand tonight. There is hope and there's promises for each and every single one of us. And God wants you to answer that. God wants to give you your promise tonight. He may have given it to you, but you might have forgot about it. But God's trying to remind you of what he told you at one time. God's trying to refresh that promise that he had given you. 
God wants you to remind you of the promise when he told you when you're right there and when you're crying out to him and when you're right there weeping and when you're right there seeking, God wants to give you that promise again tonight. We need your revival, Holy Spirit fire, burning ever brighter in our souls. Kings and kingdoms falling, hear your people calling, King of kings. i 
promises, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, I just, just come before you tonight, Father God. Father God, we just pray, Father God, that you just begin to seal this message within our hearts, Father God. Father God, that we know, Father God, what you promised us, Father God, that it's going to come to pass, Father God. Father God, that we just got to be patient, Father God. Be patient, Father God, and waiting, Father God, and knowing, Father God, what you had promised us, Father God, that it is guaranteed, Father God. I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you just be with us, Father God, as we leave the sanctuary, Father God. That we don't leave you here, Father God, but that we take you with us, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, we say, amen and amen. Amen. Don't forget we have some uh, root beer floats out there in the foyer. Amen.